Years ago, in the summer of 1955, when I first came to New York, I lived in a $25 a week room in a rundown old boarding house on Horatio Street. Once unpacked in my rented room, I set up my portable Olivetti and a ream of typing paper on a rickety table and sat down to turn out a wry but poignant and deeply touching short story that I imagined would soon appear in the pages of The New Yorker. But the muse did not turn up that day on Horatio Street, or on any other day that summer or fall. Alone in the city, pretty much penniless, and knowing almost no one in New York, I took to wandering aimlessly all over the village in Lower Manhattan, gathering material, I told myself, for the torrent of stories and novels I'd soon be spewing forth. And it was on one of those wanderings, early on a blisteringly hot Sunday afternoon, that I found myself trudging down Christopher Street and coming upon the Theatre de Lys, which was playing something called the Three Penny Opera, some sort of musical, I assumed. A matinee was just about to start. Tickets cost only $3.50, and the theater, as a banner outside proclaimed, was air-conditioned. And so, knowing absolutely nothing about Kurt Weil, Bertolt Brecht, or Weimar Germany, I decided to get out of the pizza oven heat and kill a couple of hours at the Three Penny Opera. It was, of course, a revelation. I walked out of the theater de Lise in a daze, little knowing that I had just seen what is now considered to be perhaps the most legendary and groundbreaking theatrical production ever done off-Broadway. What I did know, however, 59 years ago, on that hot Sunday afternoon, was that someday, somehow, I wanted to be a writer for the theater, the musical theater. I never did write a novel, and although I later published a number of comic stories in The New Yorker, I have in fact mainly made my living writing the books for musicals, and recently, for instance, had three of mine running at the same time on Broadway, none of them admittedly in the same class as the Three Penny Opera. Where in the world but Greenwich Village could a young apple knocker wander into a theater and come upon so remarkable a work that he was inspired to change the course of his life? Nowhere, 